Welcome to the Psychology World Podcast. I'm O'Connor Whiteley, bringing you psychology news, articles and other interesting psychology related articles. Here where I can find the podcast notes and more interesting psychology related things and here where I can get your free 8 psychology book box set at ConnorWhiteley.net. Now let's get on to the show. Hi everyone and welcome to episode 80 of the Psychology World Podcast and today's episode is on how can artificial intelligence help reduce mental health misdiagnosis and it is Saturday the 20th of March 2021 as I record this. So this episode I absolutely love and you will hear this in the content part of today's episode that I just recorded because I'm so excited this is such a brilliant topic and hopefully this will become more and more frequent in the future so you're really going to enjoy today's episode and I also really recommend that if you're new to the podcast or if you're old thank you but like um everyone who will like listens then please go back to episode 49 of the podcast where I talk about artificial intelligence in a bit more like of a broader sense this is a great episode so moving on to the psychology news section. So we're in from the British Psychological Society Research Digest. So uh, the first article is, do liberals and conservatives really have different moral foundations? Differences may be less clean cut than often claimed. The idea that political conservatives and liberals differ in a fundamental ways in their biology and neurology, personality and moral foundations has received a good deal of attention. However, cracks have begun to appear in this idea. Now, a major new review and meta-analysis of research into political orientation and moral foundation, essentially how people do morality, calls into question some influential earlier conclusions. The team reports finding support for the idea that some moral differences are between conservatives and liberals. However, they also conclude that the differences are less clean-cut than have been previously thought, and the results are also less generalizable across regions, countries, and political cultures than have been claimed. So this, I think, is a really good idea, though, because, let's face it, there are such differences between liberal people and conservatives, especially if you look at the more like, of the outliers of like the far right and the far left. So I think it is really important for psychology to understand why there are these such like differences, though. But, of course, it's always really important to actually look at earlier research like, just to see that, is it necessarily correct? And also, does it need to be revisited or revised because like that's how we know that the research that we build on now is built on a good solid foundation so the next one is uh, these two factors are linked to experience of otherworldly phenomenons across cultures and religions hearing voices is often associated with a mental illness but this belief doesn't always reflect reality with much research suggesting that many people who hear voices experience no distress and, and have never had contact with psychiatric services Religious hearing of voices also has a tradition outside of what we might consider pathological. Um, St. Augustus's recognition of the voice of God, to use one very famous example. Why do some of us hear otherworldly voices whilst others don't? According to a new study, it could be related to two factors, absorption and possessivity, both of which concern our beliefs and experiences about how the mind interacts with the world. In a work that spanned a range of faiths and cultures, the team examined exactly how these two factors can facilitate different kinds of spiritual experiences. And also, like, just to like, add to that uh, like, article, though, but, like, Prosser refers to, to the view that the boundary between the mind and the world is a permeable, that emotions linger in a room, or that someone can read minds. Prosperous views tend to be contrasted with the more intellectual idea that the mind is a discrete space, separate separate from the world. Absorption, on the other hand, is the tendency to be engrossed in sensory or imagined events, being able to lose yourself in music, films, or nature, for example. So well, these two factors are actually quite good though because I want well, yes because I actually want to go off on a slight tangent here though because hearing the voices has actually received quite a bit of like interest over the past like few years because I was reading an article in the Psychologist magazine by the British Psychological Society so that actually of like hearing like voices isn't actually yes it's actually really common in like adults though but it's not always a down to like schizophrenia or mental health though, because sometimes though, like, it just happens so these two factors i definitely think are quite interesting okay so we will do one more children as young as eight show a gender gap in negotiation okay so though the gender pay gap is narrowing in the uk it still remains 
is vital then to fully understand what causes it. And so what can be done to ensure that women are paid the same as men for doing the same work? Research does show that women are less likely than men to initiate salary negotiations. All right, and also ask for less. Now, a new study in psychological science reveals that a gender gap in negotiation emerges surprisingly early becoming apparent amongst children aged just eight to nine. This implies that efforts to close the gender pay gap should start long before anyone even enters the workforce. And this is what I actually quite like about psychology, is actually sometimes in these psychology news sections, like you do get quite a practical news section though, I meaning that if there's any parents like listening, definitely encourage your children to actually like negotiate regardless if um male or like a female and also like i you know that like lots of like women are listening to the podcast but women please uh, like negotiate at your like salary though because you will never know where this like going like to go though and also that i definitely understand the arty like uh, um for less though but the tip that works like for me and it might like work like for you is value your time value your skills just value yourself a lot more than you will really do though and don't ask for less happy your number and just stick with it oh i guess though <laughs> but like that sort of like simplistic answer okay so i really hope that you enjoyed the psychology news section so let's move on to the personal update so we're uh, moving on to the personal update so uh, this week uh, has definitely been a bit troubling though but i'm not going to like um get into that on uh, the uh, podcast though because there was a like definite the family but i'm not going to say any more like about that though uh, but this week has been lots of like writing lots of like university work though <laughs> lots of um interesting stuff about like group uh, yes about like a group of projects though uh, but overall though uh, like there's not a like great amount of like to uh, tell you though but by the time you Listen to this though, by the Global Mental Health book that I did in 2019. That should be available on all major ebook retailers now. Well, I with a new cover, a new blurb, meaning that if you want to learn about how like different cultures are like perceive mental health though, and also and also how different cultures are depression, then I really like recommend like that book though, right? Because it's really interesting, and also like it's just interesting to see how like different cultures actually perceive mental health, and then I also mention a bit about how can their ideas potentially apply to Western psychotherapy? It's, a, it's actually quite interesting. And I've also started to write the forensic psychology of like theft book, and I'm really pleased with like how that's going though. But and I'm hoping to have both of these two like forensic psychology shorts out in June, hopefully. And I really did not realise how short of a personal update this was going to be though. So as always. I always I love to know your thoughts and feelings on today's episode. So you can always email me, conorwhitely at conorwhitely.net. You can always leave a comment at the show notes at conorwhitely.net. And you can always tweet me on Twitter at sci-fi whitely. Or, quick thing about that, this week though, um, Twitter released um, audio tweets for iOS users. I have an Android phone, but hopefully um, Twitter will soon be releasing it to Android devices as well. So I'm really looking forward to be able to do um, voice tweets like in that during the week though, because... Sometimes I do feel like I actually want to do a bit more like voice stuff like during the week though because I think typing can be quite impersonal but hopefully though I will begin to use Twitter a lot more when it comes to the voice tweets though. And the sponsored product for today's episode is a Clinical Psychology. This book really ties in to like today's episode and Clinical Psychology. You know it. I, I love it. It's just such a great area of like psychology that goes into so much depth and also like um this book like explains a clinical psychology in a really easy to answer way, but also like a really in engaging way though and it breaks down what clinical psychology is why it's important and also the many different areas that makes up a clinical psychology so like if you want to know more about clinical psychology in a really easy to answer way that i cannot recommend clinical psychology enough so that's a clinical psychology available on all major ebook retailers and you can order the hardback and the paperback on amazon or your local bookstore and you can get the ebook and the paperback for free at your local library if you request it so that's enough for the personal update let's move on to the content part of today's episode so we're moving on to the content part of today's episode so we're going to be looking at how artificial intelligence can be used to help diagnose depression and bipolar so this episode i'm just so, i was so thrilled about when i found this blog post that inspired it i think this is such an amazing <laughs> it's just such a great topic because it really shows uh, the time that we live in and uh, wow yeah it's just wow and i actually had no idea how excited i was uh, about this episode until i uh, just now 
Okay, so if you remember episode 49 of the podcast, then you know that I gave my predictions about how artificial intelligence will impact our behaviour. Well, our behaviour, and I still really, really recommend that episode. In fact, on the podcast description of your app, I'm also going to include a like link to that um Yes, to the episode. So artificial intelligence can assist researchers and clinicians in disciplines that involve complex problems and nuances. And I think we can all agree that clinical psychology, just psychology in general, can be um, a bit complex at times. I know I'm definitely, I, yeah, I definitely know that I'm finding that like this a week with my like statistics. And in case you couldn't tell, I'm actually recording this content part before I've done the personal update. <laughs> well, so anyway, though, that's like this includes clinical psychology because there are lots of factors and nuances that need to be analysed. So, for example. In like mental conditions, this severity of um, MLI like, differs for every patient or client, which can definitely make diagnosis quite difficult. And interestingly, it can also lead to misdiagnosis, which actually happens quite a bit between depression and bipolar disorder. But thankfully, artificial intelligence can be used to help in these situations, which I'm just, wow, I'm just so excited about this. Okay, so artificial intelligence machine learning. So this is how you train the artificial intelligence because without going into it too much, basically, it'll be like you feed the piece of artificial intelligence, tons of like data, like to train it on, and then the machine like learns it. And also, please note, this is not like um, the sort of like sci-fi artificial intelligence, but like this is basically but the Navo artificial intelligence that like runs the Amazon algorithms, your Google searches, and basically, oh, and also like a Facebook, Facebook, basically anything that like recommends personalized content to you, that's an example of Navo artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence machine learning is increasingly being used in science as a part of data analysis and other purposes. And I really recommend you do a Google search on this topic. You will see hundreds of, of really great applications. Like for example, finding like cancerous growth that the doctors have from Insta to other health benefits. But why is it difficult to tell depression and bipolar disorder apart? So we know that depression and bipolar, they have lots of similarities. Like for example, both of these mental conditions feature long periods of sadness and depression that can last for days, weeks or months. But there are some other like, similarities. For example, like both mental conditions feature in insomnia, fatigue, a feeling of lack of self-worth, uh, the inability to concentrate and also the loss in appetite according to the National Institute of Mental Health, which I think is a US institute. So as you can see, there are lots of commonalities between these two conditions. So sadly, it's not surprising that they are mixed up and sometimes like bipolar disorder is a called depression. But more interestingly, how can artificial intelligence be used to reduce the mental health diagnosis? Even though I've completely said that subtitle wrong, but I'm going with it. <laughs> So if you go to the blog post, like you can see the actual details of the study, as in like other name though, but artificial intelligence has actually shown great benefits because when participants with depressive symptoms rating, ranging in age from 18 to 45 year old, and they were recruited on a line from an initial sample of 5,422, just over 3,200 people completed a range of mental health questionnaires and just over right and like just over 1400 wow i didn't know there was this many statistics when i was writing this blog post out but i did um, blood samples and then another 400 people were invited to complete a telephone diagnostic interview using the world health organization's world mental health international diagnostic interview why can't psychology ever give simple names like to say over a podcast <laughs> And to this tool is a really commonly used diagnostic tool for assessing mental health for conditions according to the DSM-4 and the um, ICD-10, which are basically how you would diagnose mental health for conditions. But also because this is a, to be honest, quite ridiculously detailed study, um, 900 participants provided blood samples and only 688 participants had usable blood samples, leading to the blood samples, online questionnaires and a phone interviews to be analysed. So I, I do quite like this study because it is really detailed and there are tons of different methods to support the researchers con occlusions with so this is like really good that well but moving on to the artificial intelligence bit so with the machine learning algorithm use a decision tree based method called extreme gradient boosting to uh, differentiate um participants with a bipolar disorder from people 
with depression who has self-reported a current major depression disorder diagnosis. Also, the participants' blood samples were analysed for all biological markers that targeted 203 unique peptides that represented 120 proteins. Presumably, the two mental health conditions have uh, different levels of these proteins, uh, making them easier to uh, distinguish. And then uh, the researchers said that, open quote, the diagnostic algorithm accurately identified patients with a bipolar disorder in various clinical scenarios and could help expedite accurate clinical diagnosis and a treatment of a bipolar disorder close a quote because when I was also researching uh, this article because bipolar is a quite often misdiagnosed as like depression this actually adds like between a five or well, a five and a half year and 5.7 years of delay in uh, getting diagnosed with a bipolar disorder which is a shame so the main reason why I love this study is because it really does show that using a diagnostic machine learning algorithm I really hope in the future we learn to shorten that, <laughs> well, along with a, with a blood biomarker data and data from online questionnaires. This made a lot of data. But overall, though, this can all reduce the misdiagnosis of a bipolar disorder as major depression. And whilst this is only a proof of concept demonstration, it really does show that there is an amazing potential for empirical evidence based artificial intelligence machine learning. <laughs> I'm just laughing because there's so many like long words to improve mental health treatment as well as its outcomes in the future which is really important because if you want to go into clinical psychology this is really important because it's all about improving people's lives and actually whatever area of a psychology you are working or want to work in it's all about helping people and improving people's lives so I really enjoyed today's episode I really hope that you did too and if you want to learn more clinical psychology, then please check out Clinical Psychology, available on all major ebooks. And you can order the paperback and hardback books from Amazon or your local bookstore. So have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see the show notes, then please go to connorwhitesley.net. And if you want a free eight book psychology box set, then please go to conorwhitely.net. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.